day three and we have some diagnosing to do. So this is the yeast and you might be able to see if Jim can get a close up that there is some hooch that is accumulating right here. Also, this is very, very thin. And you can tell that it has been up to this point and then collapsed back down. On, and this is the yeast. On the no yeast, I don't see hooch. It rose up to this point and then got back down. I don't see any bubbles. So, when you do sourdough, a lot of the directions say, do this on day one, do this on day two, do this on day three, and a lot of times it's the same thing. And that may work, but you also need to be aware that it doesn't always work the way the directions say. And so we need to be smart about things. Now, I might be a little concerned about these. There's just very few bubbles here, and I don't see any bubbles here. Is it dead? Well, I don't think it is, but it's way, way thin. And so I'm going to give it more food today because it's sitting out on the countertop. We want it to sour a little bit so that it becomes that distinctive sourdough, not San Francisco style sour, not quite that sour. But nevertheless, we want it to have a little bit of that bite. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can pour off some of that hooch. And it's coming along nicely. The smell is good. But because it is so thin, I don't want it that thin. So I am going to put in about a cup of flour. And we can control the thickness of the start by how much flour and how much water. It is the flour that is needed for the food. I'm going to start with a half a cup of water, but I'm not even going to put all of that in. I'm just going to stir that up inside the jar and see how it does. Okay, it is thicker. I like it thicker. I'm going to take the spatula instead of that whisk and stir this. Now, I think it can be just a little thinner. So today I'm putting in about a cup of flour and just slightly less than a half a cup of water because I want to thicken it up. I want to give the, the um, yeast colonies that are growing in there plenty of food to last for 24 hours. And I'm wondering if that half a cup yesterday wasn't quite enough, but we'll find out. I'm sure there are still enough in there that we'll still get a good rise and a lot of bubbles. Now can you see the inside there? There we go. That's much better. Okay. So it is pretty thick. Yeah. And that's about where I want it. Now I'm going to scrape down the sides of the jar so we can once again see how high it will rise. Because that's important. We're going to feed it every day like this for about another day or two before we actually set aside what we're not going to use and have our main start and then we'll start cooking with it. Okay, I think that's, that gives us enough, it's clean enough, that I think that we'll be able to check on the rising. And so this still was gonna stay out on the countertop. All right, now this one, you can see that it's just thinner than pancake batter. No hooch. There are, ooh, it is coming along with the smell, that's for sure. I had about a tablespoon of water left from that half a cup, approximate half cup that I poured. All right, so here is a cup of flour. And again, we're gonna start with about a half a cup of water, but I'm only gonna put about a fourth of a cup in to start. 
and we'll see what we get here. Oh boy, that is really thin. And again, this one is the no yeast. We are capturing wild yeast here. A lot of wild yeast lives right inside the flower, and we don't ever notice that when we use regular yeast because the commercial yeast acts so fast. But if we just let bread dough sit out without any yeast in it, it would also develop, it would also proof and rise. It might take hours, but it would. And again, you can see how this is. There it is, it's in focus now. Took a little much bit. Much thicker. Okay. All right, I'm going to scrape down the size of the jar so that we can see how much it rises tomorrow when we come and check back. All right, so there we have both of them ready to go. We'll leave them out on the counter. We will come back and check tomorrow to see how they are doing. So see you then. I, I think this is day three, but it might be day four, but I think it's day three. We had a flood if you watched on Monday and my brain is still a little bit scrambled from that, but I think that this is day three. And I wanted to show you, <laughs> is this great? Look at this, we had an overflow right here. Oh, it's stuck. And so this is the yeast and this is the no yeast. Now, I took a picture of these after one hour and after two hours, and I'm going to insert those right now. So did you notice that this one was much faster than this one? And not only did it reach the top, but it overflowed around here. This one ultimately reached the top. And so we have two really wonderful starts going right here. And you could use either one of them. This is the first time I have ever done a wild yeast start, no commercial yeast, that is ready to go in three days. Generally, it takes five. It's taken me sometimes up to 10 days. So it just depends on how much wild yeast is already in whatever flour you use. So I'm gonna show you today what we would do to finish this off. Now, I'm not interested in keeping these because these are the ones that I started almost two weeks ago. Let me get the other one. So here is the yeast and here is the no yeast. Yes. Um, and so both of these have settled down and they're producing and they're just right. There's about two cups in each one of these. Now, I really am only going to keep one of these two, and I haven't decided which one. They both are wonderful. They both smell great. Yep. Actually, the no yeast is a little bit stronger, uh, so I'll probably keep that one. Oh, that was an interesting smell. It's a little bit different. Okay, if I were going to keep one of these two, I would be keeping this one. Here is what we would do to get from here to these that you would be keeping in your refrigerator. I would uh, pour off or take off 100 grams of either one of these. 100 grams is about the same size as an egg. And then to that, I would add a cup of flour and probably a cup to a cup and a half of water. You watched me do that two or three times already. So you can judge, depending on how thick or thin your start right here is. This is now pretty thick, so I would probably do a cup and a half of water. But you want it to be about like that. Nice and viscous, a little bit of movement. And pretty much in every recipe, you will take off when you're ready to do a recipe. And we're gonna do biscuits. I'm gonna show you a fantastic biscuit recipe. Pretty much we take off a cup. And once we take off a cup, then we feed what is left. If I were gonna use one of these, I would measure off one cup, whoo, and then put it in my biscuit dough, and then I would feed this again, and I would leave it out. I wouldn't put it back in the refrigerator right after I fed it. Leave it out so it can swell up and do its thing, and then settle back the way these now have settled back. And then once it settles back, I would put it back in the refrigerator. If I were using these every single day, 
<clears throat> then I could leave them out on the countertop. But I'm not, and they would ultimately spoil or get way, way, way too strong. So I keep these in the fridge. I'm going to use up one or the other of these and not feed it, and then I'm just going to have one of these going because both of these are really strong right now. Today we're going to use um, one of our starts here for our biscuits. I'm not going to I'm not going to turn these into this because I have enough as you can see. But what I will do this will not go to waste. I'm going to use part of this in the biscuits today. Tomorrow I'll do the rest for pancakes and then over the next couple of days with this one we'll do either pancakes again or waffles. I do have a sourdough chocolate cake recipe that I haven't made it for years so I have to. I've got it. I found it just the other day. I'm getting things ready for um, one of the books that I'm writing on bread, baking bread, and just baking um, on off-grid and using sourdough. So I'll be practicing those and so one way or another you're going to get the recipe. This recipe for biscuits will also be in that new book. I can't remember, it's two or three down the line yet. I have two or three ahead of it. Um, it will be in that recipe, but I'm also going to put this recipe below this video today so you will have a copy of the recipe. So I'm going to put these back and then we'll come back when we're ready to go forward with it. Alright, so I have decided that I'm going to use the yeast one for our start today. Now we know what this is going to do when it gets fed and it will be fed with the ingredients in the biscuit dough. So here's what I have in the bowl already. This is a recipe that I put together from one that I found online and I made some changes to it. And he here are the dry ingredients. And I'll tell you what it is, but then I'm going to put the recipe below. It's two cups of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, two, two teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of soda. And now what we are going to do is add half a cup of, a, of ghee or butter or shortening or whatever fat you would like to add. You can even use lard if you wish. Some people make fantastic biscuits with lard. And then my secret ingredient. I've been toying all afternoon about whether I should really that's the oven, it's ready now. Tell you what it is or make you guess or just wait for the recipe. What do you think it looks like? Here's a hint. It goes great on sandwiches. That's right, it is mayo, pure mayo. It has some fat in it and that is a secret ingredient for biscuits. My secret ingredient. Okay, now I'm just going to work the fat in just the same way you would do pie crust. This has a half, uh, this has a quarter of a cup of uh, buttermilk flakes in it from buttermilk that I freeze dried. If you don't have that, it calls for a half a cup of buttermilk. So you could just put that in there instead. Okay, so that's nice and grainy. Now I'm going to put in a cup and I put the other jar in the refrigerator. It's ready now to go in the fridge. This is so perfect. Oh my goodness. And this will also go in the fridge, the rest of that. So it goes in. And because I'm using buttermilk powder, I need to put in a half a cup of water. If you're not going to use buttermilk powder, if you're going to use regular buttermilk, don't put the half a cup of water in. All right, so we're going to mix this biscuit dough and it should turn out to be a nice soft dough. So what does the sourdough start do? Two things. It lends flavor, that sourdough flavor which is so distinctive, and it also acts as 
part of the leaven to make them make this rise. We want our biscuits high as high can be. We have a little baking powder, a little soda in here, and that sourdough should, if we played our cards right, just help jump that leaven up way high. Okay, now you don't want to work this dough too much. I'm just going to give it about three turns. Okay, here's four of kneading. And then I'm going to press it out just using my hands and I want it to be about an inch or a little bit more high. Now, when you cut biscuits, be sure that you use a very sharp cutter. If you use something like, um, well, a jar lid that's rounded right here, you will not get that straight sharp edge. And that edge cut with a sharp cutter is what is needed to allow the biscuits to rise. And straight down and straight out. And then I'm putting it on parchment paper on this baking sheet. Close but not touching. Baking sheet is too big, but it's fine. And then we're going to gather these together, smush them, and try not to jiggle them around too much. And we're not wasteful, so we're just going to cook this little one too. All right, so we will be back when we're ready to take these out of the oven. They bake in a hot oven, 450 degrees until they are golden brown. And according to my recipe, that's about 13 to 15 minutes. I'm going to set my phone for 13 minutes and then we will check on them. We'll be back when they're done. So just a reminder, if I were going to keep this and this was going to be my ongoing start, I would feed this right now with a cup of flour and a cup and a half of water. I probably would put it in a clean container and then I would um, let it rise up and then fall down to where it's collapsed a little bit and then in the refrigerator it would go. This I am not going to feed. I'm going to use it for tomorrow morning's pancakes. It's going in the fridge right now. So we'll use this tomorrow morning for our pancakes. Meanwhile, our biscuits are cooking away. 14 minutes and here we are. This is the best one right here. Look how tall that is. Oof, I just pulled them out. So nice and tall. You can see how the cut edge does a really nice job of helping it to rise. So these are our biscuits. And uh, I think they turned out really great. Jim, shall we have a quick taste test? Will you taste one if I open no. one up? No, no, no fork. What? No fork. Yeah, I should use a fork. Here's one, here's a bite for you. These are melt in your mouth. It has that slight tang of sourdough. They're wonderful, they're just soft and tender. So I hope you enjoy this recipe.
and we will be coming back occasionally with more recipes using our sourdough starter. So I wish you the best of success in getting your started. So hurry up and get it started so that you can participate with us as we do a little bit of sourdough baking along the way. So thank you so much for joining us on this great adventure and we will see you next time.